Spears have got here just in the nick of time. What does that make us? Big damn heroes, sir. Ain't we just? In any epidemic, be it disease or hysteria, there's always a ground zero. In this case, the ground zero is the disinformation documentary, What in the World Are They Spraying? In this slick piece of propaganda, they waste 90 minutes of your life claiming that they have evidence that chemtrails are real. Yet, unsurprisingly, they never actually produce that evidence. Just the same baseless allegations that because contrails exist, they must be spraying something at the behest of a vast global criminal conspiracy whose aims are unclear at best. In one part of the film, they claim its aim is to depopulate the Earth, another to stop global warming, then to increase global warming, and finally the wild claim that it's intended to deplete natural seed stocks and increase our dependency on GMOs. To be fair, much of their message about clean air, soil, water, and healthy foodstuffs are things we can all agree on. As an organic gardener myself, I can certainly empathize with the difficulty and dangers the mega agribusinesses and pollution pose to our planet. However, as I will show, they are barking up the wrong tree by trying to pin these problems onto a non-existent conspiracy. This makes me question their true motivations. Are they deliberately trying to hide the truth? Certainly spreading these lies is easier than looking for the real causes and that leads the gullible away from confronting the real problems facing our world. Worse than that, by misrepresenting the work of legitimate scientists who are trying to answer the honest and important questions about global climate change and the safety of geoengineering, they undermine the credibility of the scientific community in the minds of gullible people. This in turn makes the environment's greatest ally part of the problem in the public's mind. Which is, of course, exactly what you want if your intent to, is to stop environmental regulation and deny global climate change. Divide and conquer has been an adage as old as warfare itself. The filmmakers present the chemtrail myth as a criminal conspiracy. As anyone who's read Sherlock Holmes knows, a crime needs motive, method, and opportunity. The filmmakers spend most of the film presenting a motive, which, as I've already stated and pointed out, is vague at best. As for the method, nobody has ever claimed that it's impossible to spray something from an airplane, just highly impractical to do so. This leaves opportunity. The filmmakers go to great lengths to show aluminum levels in particular are rising all over the world, citing Oregon, California, and Hawaii as examples. Curiously, these are all West Coast locations, a point we will return to in a moment. The filmmakers claim that the conspiracy has a goal of spraying 10 megatons of aluminum into the air. Let's examine that claim. A megaton is 1 million tons, or 2 billion pounds. In order to match the observational data, we need to assume that the aluminum is dissolved somehow into a liquid form, which would vastly increase the weight of the mass being ejected. Even if we assume a very highly concentrated solution, say 50% water to aluminum by weight, that would double the weight. That's a lot of material. Let's say that each theoretical airplane can deploy 10,000 pounds, which is an optimistic number at best. That's 400,000 flights required to deploy just one megaton. The conspiracy indicates that this has been going on for years. Well, that's nearly 1,100 flights a day every day for 10 years to deploy that much material. That is a lot of flights. In fact, it's a logistical problem on par with operating one of the world's largest airlines. Where are all those planes? Aircrafts need airports, fuel, maintenance, pilots, mechanics, a supply of chemicals, more fuel. Where is the physical evidence of these operations? As I pointed out in other videos, there's simply no way to hide that much lift capacity in the national airspace system. It would get noticed by pilots and other observers. Also, worldwide annual primary production of aluminum in 2006 was around 34 million tons, and recycled production around 16 million. Therefore, 10 million tons constitutes 20% of the annual production of the entire planet. Even spread out over 10 years, this is a lot of aluminum to remove from the market. It would get noticed through the financial transactions and the sheer volume of the motion of the product. So there goes your opportunity. But what about those arising aluminum levels? 
It is a logical fallacy to say that correlation implies causation. Linking data to a cause requires more proof than just saying it over and over again. However, the filmmakers spend most of the film doing just that and nothing else. Much of what they say regarding the pollution is correct. There is evidence that aluminum levels are rising and aluminum is toxic. There is plenty of evidence for both. However, to pin the cause on a fantasy conspiracy hides the real source of the problem. The film claims over and over again that aluminum levels are rising rapidly and universally. This implies vast amounts of aluminum are being deployed. As I've discussed, this implies a large number of flights, but that claim completely lacks physical evidence. However, there is another explanation. As it turns out, the causes of aluminum pollution is well understood, if you care to look for it. Acid rain. Acid rain results from the burning of fossil fuels. Cars are a major contributor to the problem in the USA and Europe, but by far the biggest contributor globally are coal-burning power plants. Aluminum itself makes up about 8% of the Earth's mass. Much of this is tied up in inert minerals in the soil. Coal-burning power plants release sulfur dioxide. This in turn reacts with water vapor in the atmosphere and nitrogen to create nitric and sulfuric acids. These acids enter the soil where it leaches aluminum and other chemicals from the otherwise inert minerals where it's naturally found. From there, the metal finds its way into the ecosystems, including rain and snow. Acid rain is a well-documented problem, especially in the eastern United States and Europe, which is why it's significant the filmmakers chose to present West Coast aluminum levels only. Coal-burning power plants are, in fact, releasing megatons of pollution including aluminum, into the environment. This pollution is global in nature given the number of coal-burning power plants in the industrialized world. In this detailed study by the Physicians for Social Responsibility, the researchers carefully document the effects of burning coal has on humans. The list of both pollutants and health effects exactly matches those alleged by the filmmakers to result from the chemtrail conspiracy. Returning to the real question of rising aluminum on the west coast, the question becomes what has changed to cause the rising levels of, of aluminum there? Well, the filmmakers don't give a clear timeline, but clues indicate that this has happened over the last 10 years or so, which jives with the rise of the chemtrail conspiracy's alleged timeline. So what has changed in the last 10 years? In the last 10 years, China has increased its consumption of coal by 180%, in the words of one astronaut, many of the great coastal cities of China hide from our cameras under a blanket of smoke from soft coal fires. In the words of one global economic publication, coal powers the Chinese economy. The country is the world's largest consumer, gobbling up nearly half of the world's coal consumption in 2009. Coal accounted for 71% of China's energy in 2008, more than three times the United States share. The Electricity Council estimates that the country's coal demand will reach 1.92 billion tons in 2011, up nearly 10% from 2010. Much of this coal burning is totally unregulated by U.S. and European standards. As the recent tragic events in Japan show, pollution is a global problem. Radioactive iodine traveled farther and faster than had been thought possible. This demonstrates that the West Coast is unquestionably affected by pollution from Asia. As one article described it, scientists in California and the Pacific Northwest have made a startling discovery in recent years. Pollution from China, they say, is degrading the air quality along the West Coast of the United States. Soot, mercury, and acid rain producing compounds from Chinese power plants and factories have reached such high levels that the pollution is now spreading across the Pacific. What is true here? Let's use that wonderful logic tool, Occam's Razor. Which is more probable? A vast global conspiracy that in order to account for the observed data would require a huge logistical and financial support structure. A structure for which there is absolutely no physical evidence. Or a well-documented, physically observable, growing pollution problem caused by booming Chinese coal consumption. This makes coal-burning power plants 
a far more likely cause for the deteriorating environment and rising health problems that we all face. But by buying into the chemtrail conspiracy enthusiast delusions, you miss the real problem. Our dependence on fossil fuels and the need for real meaningful change in our economic systems, which may be exactly what the climate change deniers like Alex Jones want. There is good news. China seems to be slowly awakening to their pollution problem thanks to the international pressure. But in the end, it will be economic pressure that drives the speed of those changes. That economic pressure we can all apply by the choices we make every day. Instead of blaming your problems on phantom conspiracy hobgoblins in the sky, make green decisions in your own actions. If I'm your mission, Shepard, best give it up. You're welcome on my boat. God ain't.